Many people, including me, say Apple blew it twice, once with the Microsoft operating system and again with Google Android phones. Should Tesla learn from history and not make the same mistake? Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. Let's take a quick look back at history first to kind of give this uh, episode some context. So I'm gonna talk specifically about Apple. First of all, in the late 1980s and early 1990s, Apple had a crushingly huge lead in the GUI operating system or graphical user interface, right? They had the Macintosh operating system. They had things just way well in hand. <laughs> and a lot of people approached them to get licenses for their OS, for their hardware. But Apple said, no way. They were like, our hardware or the highway, which is honestly still the way they are. As I'm sure most of you, at least those who are older than <laughs> teenagers know, that Microsoft developed, you know, Windows 1, 2, and 3 in the 80s. 80s and very early 90s, but they were absolutely terrible. So I'm sure if you're old enough to be, you know, to have used computers in the 1980s, you remember just how bad that was. So people actually preferred to use MS-DOS, and there was a time when there was a big religious argument between using a command line interface versus using a graphical user interface. That was a thing, man. But then along came Windows 95, and Apple almost went out of business in the late 1990s. They actually even licensed some of their hardware for a hot minute back in the 90s, and they actually had to call the man himself, Steve Jobs, back to save the day. And by the way, if anybody wants a like little history of this time period, I think it's utterly fascinating, the 80s and 90s and Apple and Microsoft. Just let me know in the comments or at Gmail, and I'll actually think about doing an episode on that. Again, in 2007, Apple came out with the first iPhone, and it had a GUI and hardware that were way ahead of the competition. Does anybody remember the Palm Trio from back then? <laughs> I actually had one of those, and golly, it was a big upgrade to go to the iPhone from there. And again, people asked to license particularly their software, but Apple said no way they wanted the whole pie. And it took a while, but Google created the Android operating system for phones. They got it up and running. Then eventually Samsung and other companies started using it. And now we know the story again, right? Apple does not have the whole pie. They don't have the whole pie in computers. They don't have the whole pie in phones. Obviously, they're doing pretty well for themselves, but they could have done better if they had made better decisions back in the day, at least in my opinion. Let's now turn to Tesla. Tesla is very close to an inflection point in full self-driving. It's coming really soon. I predict by the end of next year or so, about... 12, 13, 14 months from now, they are going to have full self-driving pretty much licked, and they're going to be in a position where Apple was with their operating system in the 19, early 1990s, and then again with their phones in the, in the 2000 knots. So when they get this solved, nobody else is going to be close at that moment. They're going to have a time period where nobody else is going to have what they have. But small startups like Comma.ai are working really, really hard to bridge that gap. And of course, Google or GM might get there eventually. I don't know. I think they're barking up the wrong tree personally, but maybe they'll get there too. But anyway, there's going to be a window of time where Tesla actually has the lead. What should they do? We will discuss what Tesla should do in just a second. But first of all, if you enjoy the video, definitely make sure you like it so other people can find it because that's how YouTube works and subscribe for more of these things. Also, I want to make a huge shout out to my Patreon on Patreon. They have been wonderful and actually really supportive and we've had uh, I've had some good advice from them, so it's been really wonderful. I have one new patron since the last video, so Stefan Sells. I hope I've got that about right in the pronunciation. Hey, good to see you. And also a shout out to my very talented musician, Zenly Music. Uh, you can look for his link in the description or just search for Zenly Music online. I know what he did for me was kind of silly, but he's actually a super talented musician. So, you know, if you get a chance, show his channel some love. And also don't forget if you're in the market for a new Tesla, you can use our referral link, which is in the description. If you buy a Tesla from them using the referral code, then both of us get 1000 supercharger miles. So that's a bonus. All right, so what should Tesla do? There's two options, <laughs> at least that I can think of, two main options. Number one, they can hold on to their IP and they can only put it in their cars. That gives them a huge first mover advantage. Many more people are going to want their cars because that's got full self-driving in it. But right now they can't make enough anyway. It might change by the end of 2021 with Giga Texas and Giga Berlin coming online and Giga Shanghai getting bigger. But still, you know, it's going to be tough for them to make the quantity of cars that people are requesting at this point. 
Also, early robo-taxi fleets will have to have Teslas if they're the only ones who have licked full self-driving on a nationwide basis. But, <laughs> number one, like I said, they simply can't produce all the cars in the world. They can't scale that fast. So others are going to work really, really hard to catch up on the AI front. Industrial espionage is certainly not out of the question by any means. I mean, that has been done before. And also, in a way, this holds back progress of the entire auto industry. And of course, this allows another company to sneak in and possibly take the lion's share of the market, since that other company, like considering Kama AI that doesn't sell their own cars, they just sell the full self-driving package, they don't care. They want to license it. So you could easily have an Apple iPhone versus um, Android, you know, made by many, many, many companies sort of situation. So two, the other option is to license the hardware and software stack to other manufacturers. So they give away their special sauce, right? No soup for you! If you can buy a Chevy with the same full self-driving for cheaper, why would you buy a Tesla? They could also dilute their brand because what if you get a crap car with Tesla FSD built in, right? That could really reduce the cachet of Tesla. And they could also sell fewer cars if they license this hardware and software. But... First of all, Tesla hardware, their cars, are so good that people are still going to want them because they make damn good electric cars regardless of the full self-driving. For any given price point that they're competing at right now, they're the best. So once, like, for example, the $25,000 car comes out, it's going to be really, really hard for anybody to compete with them on price, quite honestly. So Tesla could start selling to top brands so as not to dilute their brand with very strict conditions. So, right, they wouldn't have brand dilution in that case because they'd, it'd be more of a cherry on top for these other companies. Like, it would be BMW with Tesla full self-driving built in, right? That sounds really nice cachet. <laughs> and of course, Tesla obviously cannot produce all the EVs in the world. So if they only sold to car companies that promised to put them in EV cars, they would actually be helping to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy, which is their mission statement. Of course, Elon has stated publicly that they need help from others to help this transition. It, it, they can't do it by themselves. It's just impossible. And this could be a way of rewarding companies, like even startups like Lucid, who create quality EVs by giving them this, not giving them, selling them this software and hardware. Which brings us to the best part. This strangles the competition. There is no financial incentive to pay for folks to develop full self-driving hardware and software if it already exists and is available to a larger market. In addition, your competition is paying you for every single car they sell. How nice is that? So this becomes almost a pure profit wing for Tesla. They have some hardware costs to build and sell, and of course they can do it at a markup, but the software aspect of it is, is pretty much pure profit because they've already done it for their own cars. What would I do if I were Elon Musk? Well, first I'd probably ride around in my cool prototype Model S Plaid for a while, and then I'd sit in my awesome James Bond submarine car while I watched the Crew Dragon 1 launch. But then I'd get back to reality and I'd get back to work. So I would definitely talk to Volkswagen, for example, and maybe GM, and certainly Lucid and other smaller startups if they come knocking, and it would only again be for EV cars, but I would sell the hardware at just a slight markup, maybe 10-20%, but then a significant amount of markup for the software. Some sort of a business model might be charging the OEM something like $5,000 for the hardware, and then at least another $5,000 for the software anytime it's actually activated, which could actually be done through Tesla so they could control that, right? The car itself might be doing its own thing, but the actual full self-driving hardware might communicate with Tesla. And then you let the car companies decide how much they market up beyond that, right? So the hardware might make the car cost $5,000 more, and then if you get the full self-driving option, that's like an additional $10,000, right? Something on, the, on that order. Certainly Tesla would not want anyone underselling them on the full self-driving option, so they got to charge a pretty steep price for it. <laughs> so anyway, if all of that goes well and they're able to expand that, they could blanket the rest of the industry over time. And this would completely choke the competition. Honestly, to, to, to put a, a side note on here, I think personally that competition is a good thing overall. And so I don't think it's a bad thing. And I'm actually a huge fan of George Hotz and I really wish comma AI the best. I'm actually going to do an episode on it one of these days soon, but I'm talking about what Tesla should do for their own business model. And I think that they should license the hardware and software. If they do that, they have other people paying them royalties for what is incrementally extremely cheap to produce. They make massive profits off it and they fulfill their mission statement of accelerating the world's transition to sustainable energy. What else could you want? 
Okay, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, definitely make sure you like and subscribe for more of them. And also ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye. <laughs>